Hello and welcome to the first in a series of six films about the standard level equilibrium topic from the IB Diploma Chemistry course. Um, in this film we're going to be looking at what we mean by equilibrium and hopefully by the end of it um, you'll ha have an understanding of the key features that a chemical system that has reached a state of dynamic equilibrium will have and we'll compare this dynamic equilibrium to the sort of static equilibria that we're probably a bit more used to seeing. So let's start off by looking at what we mean by equilibrium and I suppose one of the first words that might come into our minds when we consider what equilibrium means is a, is a balanced state. And usually if we're thinking of things that are balancing then the processes that might cause them to become unbalanced, so maybe a swing to the left or a string, swing to the right, aren't happening. Okay, so the object like these coins on top of the other coin is balanced because it has stopped moving. Okay, so hence the term static. This is a balanced state where things have stopped. And that's very different to the sort of equilibria that we usually see in chemistry because these are dynamic equilibria and that is to suggest that they are moving somehow and yet there's still this state of balance so if we think of what's going on with this iceberg um, on a macroscopic level that is to say from a distance it might look like the iceberg isn't changing so its size might be constant okay but on a microscopic level there might still be some processes occurring that might cause it to change size but aren't causing it to change size. So if we think about what's happening on a microscopic level, that is on a molecular level to this iceberg, well the ice could be turning into water, it could be melting. Now if I write that as a kind of chemical equation then I could say that ice turns into water. But any water that comes, that comes into contact with this iceberg could freeze onto its surface so in other words the water could turn back into ice and if the iceberg isn't changing in size so that is to say its macroscopic um, properties are unchanging that's not because freezing and melting have stopped taking place it's because freezing and melting are happening at the same rate as one another so there's still this movement going on there's still these competing processes that are still taking place but because they're happening at the same rate as one another the system is in a position is in a state of equilibrium now if we consider equilibrium in a chemical context um, for a system to be able to reach a state of equilibrium um, there has to be some competing processes and if we think about how this might happen well if I've got some reactants A and B that can turn into my products, which I'm calling C here, and these products can turn back into the reactants, then we'll have what is called a reversible reaction. We'll represent it using this rather unusual arrow, which kind of points both ways. It's single-headed in both directions. And now we can refer to two competing reactions. And we usually call the left to right one, the one that turns reactants into products, we usually call that the forward reaction, and the one that goes from right to left, I suppose in the way that we're not really used to seeing it, the one that turns products back into reactants, we usually call that the backward reaction. And if this system were to reach equilibrium, what we know is that the forward reaction has to be happening at the same speed as the backward reaction. So when the amounts of A and B and C stop changing and we reach equilibrium, it's not because these two reactions have stopped, it's just because they're going at exactly the same speed. Now, we talk about where the position of equilibrium lies quite often in chemical contexts. And if we think about sort of the sort of static equilibria that we see in our lives, they're usually right in the middle. So things that are balancing are usually balancing in the middle of something. Okay? Now with a dynamic equilibrium in chemistry, that needn't be the case at all. And in fact, we um, use this term position of equilibrium to say where the balance lies exactly okay so these diagrams here this they're, so they're showing us three reaction systems one two and three and what they're supposed to be showing is three different systems where the position of equilibrium is different okay now in each of these diagrams we can see these purple and blue blobs which we might think of as our reactants like A and B on the previous slide and they can turn into these orange blobs or our product or C from our equation on the previous slide 
Okay, And in reaction system 1, it looks like the reactants are quite good at turning into products. And by the time we reach T3, so there's nothing changing anymore, there seems to be quite a lot of products here and not a lot of reactants. So we can say that the position of equilibrium here lies to the right. In reaction system 3, it looks like when we reach equilibrium, so things have stopped changing, right? there's quite a lot of reactants and not very many products. So this position of equilibrium lies to the left. And it could be anywhere in between. okay? But we describe where the balance is by talking about left or right, rather than talking about how many reactants or products there are. The convention is to talk about the position of equilibrium lying to the left or to the right. Now, if we um, move on now and look at what um, a graphical representation of a system reaching equilibrium might look like, we can see um, on these two graphs we've got this uh, quite simple system where A is able to turn into B and B is able to turn back into A. And what these two graphs do is they look at this from two different perspectives. They're looking at it starting from all A and no B and starting from all B and no A in the container. So if we think about what's going to happen here, as A turns into B, the amount of A is going to decrease. Okay, So that's what we can see here, is the concentration of A is falling because it's turning into B. As it turns into B, well then the concentration of B is going to increase. Okay, As there becomes more and more B in the vessel, the chances of B turning into A increase. And as the amount of A falls, then the chances of A turning into B decrease. Okay? So in other words, the rates of the two reactions, the rate of the forward reaction is going to be large at the start, because there's lots of A, but the rate of the backward reaction is going to be small, because there is no B. As the amount of B increases, so the rate of the backward reaction increases. As the amount of A falls, so the rate of the forward reaction decreases until eventually they'll be going at the same speed, we'll reach equilibrium. How can we tell we've reached equilibrium? Well, because everything has stopped changing. The concentrations of A and B are now constant. Okay, Not because the two reactions have stopped, but because they're happening at the same speed. And here we look at it from the opposite kind of direction. So we're starting with no A and lots of B in our container. Again, the amount of B is going to fall as it get used, gets used up. The amount of A is going to increase because B is turning into A. And so, although the forward reaction in this case starts at zero, and the backward reaction is going quickly, as the amount of A increases, the forward reaction speeds up. As the amount of B falls, the backward reaction slows down until they reach the same rate as one another. In fact, we could mark on this graph the time at which they reach equilibrium. And that's when the concentrations stop changing because the rates are equal. OK, so now, there's, I suppose, a few things to understand there. But importantly, if we're asked the question in an exam to, uh, to talk about the things that characterize a system that has reached a state of equilibrium, we need to be able to talk about not only the concentrations of things, so the way that things appear on a macroscopic level to have stopped changing, but also why they've stopped changing. So we need to be at home with the fact that the concentrations at equilibrium of our reactants and products will be constant. They don't have to be the same as one another, remember, because the position of equilibrium could be in lots of different places. But the rates of the forward and backward reactions have to be the same if those concentrations are to remain constant. Now we said at the start of this film that we were hoping to understand what we mean by a dynamic equilibrium and to compare it to a static equilibrium. Hopefully those things make sense. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.